Thanks, Gloria, and I'm Randy Hansen. In today's World News Headlines, Election Day outcome rested on the battleground. And Obama said, you've seen me fight for change. And Romney said Obama had failed to deliver on promise of change. In New York and New Jersey widened voting options in post-Sandy recovery. And HUD halts some foreclosures in storm-hit areas. And dozens killed in wave of Syrian violence. And in Iraq, suicide attack kills 31 near military base in Baghdad. And U.S. soldiers charged in massacre of Afghan civilians appears in court. And Pakistani family says U.S. drone attacks killed elderly women, wounding grandchildren. In court, here's arguments in alleged entrapment case of the Newburgh Four. And U.S. veteran placed on no-fly list without explanation. Appeals court hears challenge to Arizona abortion ban and judge sides with Michigan company seeking to opt out of contraception rule. And four dozens, four arrested in dozens of protests in Keystone pipeline problem. Before these stories, GVTV News would like to thank one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GVTV News. And by the way, our, we're a little dated this week, so the election's over. Today's first world news story, voting was underway yesterday in the country as Americans uh, decided on the 2012 election between President Obama and Republican challenger Mitt Romney. The outcome hinged on the battleground states, Ohio, Florida, Colorado, Iowa, and Virginia. Addressing supporters in Wisconsin, President Obama had said his initial campaign vow of change is still underway. And he said, so when I say Wisconsin that I know that what real change looks like, you've got cause to believe me because you've seen me fight for it. You've seen me deliver it. You've seen the scars on me to prove it. You've seen the gray hair on my head to show you what it means to fight for change. And you've been there with me after all we've been through together. We can't give up now because we've got more change to do. President Obama finished a packed day of campaign in Iowa before winning. And then despite all the problems in the economy, um, he's our new president, or the same president again. Mitt Romney had said, I know president wants you to think all sorts of diversionary issues and decide what key in an election, but I think the election comes down to this question. Do you want four more years, the last four years, or do you want real change? President Obama promised change, but he couldn't deliver it. I promised change. I have a record, record of achieving it. Uh, he won't get a chance to do that, so we'll have four more years. Let's hope something happens. Widespread concerns have raised over how residents in areas hit hard by Superstorm Sandy will be able to vote in areas to remain without power. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has signed an executive order allowing residents to cast a provisional ballot or affidavit in polling places in the New Jersey. Has also extended Gov Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey had announced that displaced New Jersey residents could vote through e email and fax, but state officials said the voters would have to submit a paper ballot. And one coastal country 
County in New Jersey. Officials reportedly hired a converted camper to deliver mail-in ballots to storm shelters. Barbara Newchert, Hudson County clerk, because of devastation across the country, all the county clerks throughout the state of New Jersey have extended hours so that people can actually physically walk into our office and vote by mail, which they call it by mail. It's really like a paper ballot. So they fill out the application, they get a ballot, they vote that ballot, they can actually walk to the Hudson County Board of Elections office, which is right down the hall. New York City, meanwhile, planned to run shuttle buses to bring coastal residents to polls. Government come in order to halt on home foreclosures on federally backed mortgages in areas devastated by last week's Superstorm Sandy. On Monday, Housing and Urban Development Secretary Sean Donovan said loans under the Federal Housing Administration would see a foreclosure moratorium for 90 days. The Housing Department also says it plans to pay for the hotel stays of some 34,000 displaced people in New York and New Jersey. New York City alone had up to 40,000 displaced residents in need of shelter, including 20,000 in public housing. And Syria has seen some more of it, or some of its worst violence in months. Uh, fighting raged across the country. Syrian activists say at least 159 people were killed nationwide on Monday, nearly half from the city of Idlib. At least 31 people have been killed in suicide attack in a group of Iraqi soldiers on a group of Iraqi soldiers outside the military base near Baghdad. It was one of the worst attacks against Iraqi military so far this year. The U.S. soldier charged in a massacre of Afghan civilians in March appeared in court on Monday, for last Monday, for a preliminary hearing to determine whether he will face a full court martial. Robert Bales faced 16 counts of murder, one of each of his victims. Musa Mahmoudi of Afghanistan's Independent Human Rights Commission called on the United States to ensure that the victims' families are heard. He also said, we strongly demand and we strongly ask the United States that the justice be applied and the trial should be based on the principles of fair trial and provide opportunities and time to victim families and members to be represented and to be heard in the court in the United States there. Robert Bales was on his fourth combat tour following earlier stints in Iraq and Afghanistan. On Monday, a former military comrade testified that Bales had shown no remorse after committing the shootings. Prosecutors are seeking the death penalty. A family in Pakistan is accusing the United States of killing an elderly woman and wounding six of her grandchildren in a drone attack late last month. The strike reportedly occurred in a remote village in North Warsistine near Pakistani border with Afghanistan. Speaking from Peshawar, the woman's grandson and son described the moment of her body was found and called for a full investigation of her death. Kalim Ula said, I saw that my uncle was running around in the field. I thought he was looking for my grandmother. I started running here and there with him. Then we found her lying in a ditch. My uncle tried to pick her up but could not do so because she was broken into pieces. She was in a very bad shape. Rafik U. Raymond said, We appeal to the whole world to thoroughly investigate this incident so that any such occurrences do not take place with other people in the future and that no innocent women and children are killed again. A federal p appeals court has heard arguments in the case of four New York men who have allegedly uh, government entrapment in their 25-year sentences for bombing plot. The Newburgh Four, as they are known, were convicted for placing what they thought was bombs in New York synagogue in 2010. Defense attorneys say the men were entrapped by government agents and did not and not predisposed to commit a terrorist crime. During their sentencing last year, the judge in the case acknowledged from the bench that the men were not terrorists as alleged by the government and that no crime would have occurred if not for the role of the FBI informant. After hearing from prosecutor and defense attorneys on Monday, a three-judge panel of Second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals said it would rule at a later date. An African-American Muslim and 10-year veteran of the U.S. military has come forward to reveal he has placed on the U.S. no-fly list without explanation. Speaking to The Guardian, former Air Force Service member 
Sadiq Long said he had been prevented from visiting his ailing mother in Oklahoma after learning the Department of Homeland Security has barred him from flying to the United States. Long had bought a ticket to Oklahoma from his home in Qatar shortly after learning his mother's congestive heart condition was worsened. According to Long, he has no criminal history and after six months has yet to receive an explanation as to why he has been included on the list. In a federal appeals court heard arguments Monday in a case challenged an Arizona law that bans abortion after 20 weeks gestation or 18 weeks post-fertilization, except in medical emergencies. Abortion rights advocates call the measure among the most extreme of the more than six similar bans across the United States. The law is on hold pending the outcome of the appeal. A federal judge has ruled in favor of a Michigan company seeking to opt out of a requirement in the new fed federal health care law to provide contraception coverage to female employees. Judge Robert Cleland of the Federal District Court in Detroit sided with the family-owned company that argued that funding contraceptives would violate the family's religious beliefs. The ruling marked the second time a federal judge has sided with an employer seeking an exemption on the grounds of opposition to contraceptives. Dozens of protesters opposed the Keystone XL oil pipeline held a rally on Monday at last Monday in Washington, D.C. Office of the firm lobbying on behalf of TransCanada, the company behind the pipeline. Four protesters were arrested after staging a sit-in and refusing to leave. The protest was held in solidarity with a more than six-week blockade in Texas where protesters were attempting to block progress on the pipeline's construction. The Keystone XL would carry oil from Alberta tar sands to the Gulf Coast. President Obama has put off decisions on its approval until after the election. And that's it for the World News Today. Now we would like to thank one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. You guessed it, it's us. GV TV News. Christopher's Old World Deli and Catering Company has brought its delicious food and service downtown Grass Valley. Do you like desserts? They got them. You like international style lunches? They got them. Christopher's Deli and Catering for parties, get togethers, weddings, or Whatever. Open seven days a week. Bell Star Shop is a one of a kind place you will find on the ridge. Steaming hot coffee and a cool atmosphere with healthy food, organic desserts, and meals available. Belle and her smile will not be forgotten the first time you visit. That's right, it's time for the police blotter and pictures in the blotter, not from these actual events, but used for visual aid only. These public records are released by local law enforcement. Grass Valley Police Department on Monday, 8.28 a.m. A report was taken from 1000 block of Idaho, Maryland Road, requesting extra patrols due to break-ins to a yard and thefts from trucks. 9.07 a.m. A report was taken 800 block of Whispering Pines Lane of theft of tools. 10.36 a.m. A report was taken from 800 block of Old Tunnel Road of theft of a bicycle. And 10.59 a.m. A report was taken from Gondon Park of people smoking weed with a toddler running around. No drugs were found and they were moving on. 11.23 a.m. A report was taken from 700 block of Taylorville Road of counterfeit $10 bill. 
At 12.21 p.m., a woman from 400 block of South Auburn Street reported a woman ordering items from a business with a stolen credit card. At 12.54 p.m., a report was taken from 900 block of Idaho, Maryland Road of an attempted burglary to a business. 1.08 p.m., a report of a trailer. And 2.03 p.m., a report was taken from East Main Street of tarps had been put up, possibly by transients. Nothing was located. 2.07 p.m., a report was taken from Mill Street finding a baggie of drugs, which officers subsequently could not locate. And 2.23 p.m., a woman was cited on suspicion of shoplifting in the 100 block of West McKnight Way. And 3.18 p.m., a report was taken from 200 block of South Auburn Street of vandalism. 3.52 p.m., a report was taken 500 block of Butler Street of fraud. 12 juveniles in a physical fight. No fight was found. Suspects were advised to leave the park. 4.57 p.m., a report was taken from 600 block of Sutton Way of a shoplifter who had been chased and dropped items. Run, Chris, run. 6.29 p.m., a report was taken from 100 block of Mill Street of two men and two women possibly stole donation cups. They could not be located. At 7.33 p.m., a report was taken 400 block of South Auburn Street of an ongoing issue with a racing sure. motorcycle. And 7.41 p.m., a report was taken South Auburn and Neal Streets of a drunken man fell twice. He was given a ride to his residence. 8.24 p.m., a report was taken 100 block of Bank Street. Two men continuing to trespass. They were admonished. And that's it for the police blotter today. Now we'd like to thank one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GV TV News. Soundcheck Music Center, the rock and roll connection. We have guitars, amps, drum equipment, sound accessories, lessons, and repairs. We are located at 671 Maltman Drive, Grass Valley, 530-272-7236, open seven days a week. In local news headlines, 70 gang members scuffle at Hmong New Year's Festival. In Telethon, a big success. $18,000 to benefit Nevada County TV station. Today's first local story written by Nancy Pasternak. Yuba County Sheriff deputies called to provide security for an annual Hmong New Year's celebration in Yuba City found themselves outnumbered Sunday by scuffling gang members whose violence eventually involved about 70 people. The melee involved roughly 50 members or affiliates of the gang Hmong Nation Society, or HNS, and 20 from Menace Boys Crew, or MBC, according to Sheriff Spokesperson Lieutenant Damon Gill. It began with verbal threats just inside the entrance of the Yuba Sutter Fairgrounds at about 2.30 p.m. on the second day of the annual two-day cultural celebration. Yuba City Police Department officers and Sutter County Sheriff deputies were tied up with patrol and security duties at the concurrent Yuba City Sikh Festival, which each year attracts between 60,000 and 100,000 people to northwest Yuba City and Tierra Bueno, Buena. The Yuba County Sheriff Deputies Department was providing security at the fairgrounds in the absence of the Yuba City and Sutter County law enforcement. A deputy was struck in the back with a metal chair, said Gill, but no serious injuries were reported and no other weapons are thought to have been used by the gang members. We're looking to identify the parties involved, said Gill, who is hoping witnesses will contact law enforcement to help identify them. The Yuba County deputies ended up calling for assistance, but by the time they were able to get there, most of the gang members had already fled. The eight deputies at the scene used batons and pepper spray to defend themselves and others in the incident. And no arrests were made. And any time there's any type of gang incident, we have to look at potential for retaliation, Gil uh, also replied. 
By anyone's measuring stick, Nevada County Television's October 13th telethon was a success, raising almost twice as much as Community Access Television Station's initial goal. With the new facility necessitating funds to complete the construction of the studio and new broadcasting equipment needed, organizers of the Power Up NCTV had a goal to raise $10,000 at the telethon. The event itself garnered more than $8,000, but thanks to an anonymous donor who pledged $10,000, NCTV walked away with $18,372, according to Terry Hicklin, NCTV's access coordinator. There's a huge sigh of relief, Hicklin said. His prayers answered. It makes us realize that people do care. Station has provided community access television for Western Nevada County for nearly two full decades, most recently from facilities at the old Armory building off Zion Street in Nevada City. Its prayers answered, it makes us realize that people do care. Well, that's what she had quoted. I quoted her first, I quoted her again there. This spring, NCTV, also known as Nevada County Digital Media Center, moved into the Nevada City Tech Park on Providence Mine Road, location subleased from Grass Valley USA, LLC, formerly known as the Grass Valley Group. Primarily, we were trying to get our studio completed, Hicklin said. We are at the point where any, when an, an electrician was finished his work, then we're able to start putting the inyards back in. Over the years, community producers have created programs chronicling a multitude of Sierra Foothill happenings from local elections, community events, and local news, like GVTV News. As well as cultural programming, NCTV's government channel has broadcast Grass Valley's and Nevada City's Council and Planning Commission meetings, as well as county government meetings. The move wasn't the only big change for NCTV. The group has five new board members, and it's in term director Emma Santa is no longer working for the station but she did a great job while she was here and the rest of us that got thrown out with the bathwater. Part of the excess money from the telethon will help in recruiting a new executive director Hicklin said we haven't had a chance to get together and celebrate but hopefully when the studio is ready we'll have a big party. That's it for local news today now we would like to thank the Union, Amy Goodman, Reuters, Associated Press, and others for the source of news, and you for watching. You can watch this broadcast, Comcast Cable, NCTV Channel 11, in Nevada County, 8 a.m., 3 p.m., 7.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, Sudden Link 16 in Truckee and Alta Sierra. Also, Saturday now, we've added a 10.30 a.m. and Sunday, an 8 p.m. show. We're also streamed on Internet, NCTV's Digital Media Center website, which I watched last night and watched the uh, returns. It was a great show on the election. Uh, TV's looking great on in the internet. NevadaCountyTV.org, you should check it out. And GVTV.org, don't forget, and GrassValleyTelevision.com, that's our home station. And we will talk to you later.
Я не 